Hello everyone, Master Xeno 1001 back here again. In the last video, we went through the process of creating this mesh using all the modifiers being kept live, and then it shows you the process of going through and creating a mod scroll. In this video, I'll be showing you the um, workflow of taking this mesh, adding a triangulate on top in order to triangulate the end guns, in which we can then export this out to Substance Painter, get it painted, and bring it back over to Eevee. And so without further ado, let's be. After completing the first video, I realized, you know, we can take this a little bit farther. And in the uh, moments preparing for it, um, I did. So let's turn on wireframe, look at what we have here. For the most part, it's actually not bad. So the easiest way to apply all modifiers is to go under modifiers. And the final option is apply modifiers. But what we want to do is duplicate it and then move it to another group. So we'll just call this uh, M2, one, two, three. So this is our object and we will just apply modifiers, except for that time it did not work. So we'll just use control A, just use uh, visual geometry to mesh, kind of useful. And now everything has been applied. So the next thing from here, sheesh, I'm getting so many messages. All right, I see what's going on. There's a lot happening. All right, so continuing on, um, the next thing from here is under mesh tools, we're gonna to use auto unwrap. And this will just give us a quick UV unwrap. As you can see, due to the level of geometry, probably taking a moment, we see that we're looking at um, 75,000 faces. So we probably want to take this moment and add in triangulate. Now the interesting thing about the triangulate and the way that it's applied via hops is um, thanks to this new value of minimal vertices, it will only add it to anything bigger than four uh, verts around, basically ingon. So every ingon is triangulated and every quad is basically ignored which makes our lives a lot easier. So if we come out of uh, full screen and we look at the UV editing tab, we can see what our UV islands look like. And you can see that there's a little bit of geometric um, artifacting going on here on all the pieces because of the end gods. So this is why the triangulate modifier is important. If we go ahead and apply it, and we come in here and look at this after selecting everything, we can see that everything's filled in and it's solid. So these aren't the best UVs, but they'll definitely work for our needs, especially considering the workflow and speed in which we created this object. So I'm just going to jump to here and we'll just export it and I'll copy that path. We'll just export that object real quick. And so when it comes to texture and these sort of things, that is the workflow I usually go through. So one moment, I'll open Substance Painter. So now with Substance Painter up, I'm just going to click on new and we're just gonna bring in this file and we want our document resolution. We I want it to be 2048, but on this uh, Vega M GPU that's in this NUC, I know it will destroy it. So just based off of previous experience with messing with this, uh, while we have this texture set settings up, we're going to go ahead and bake the texture maps 2048. Uh, just leave everything at their defaults. Uh, we're just doing this so we have uh, positional information and ambient occlusion, uh, which will help with the shading and get us um, more to play with when it comes to using smart mass. So this should be done processing any moment. And here we go. So we got a nice little AO look going on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete this layer. We'll add a new fill layer. On this fill layer, we're just going to give it some aluminum. Maybe not aluminum. There we go, we'll go with this one. However, we may want to increase the scale of it a little bit. See, maybe they have some parameters here. Uh, 
that looks like my islands generating the map so we'll leave that one here and the next thing we'll do is add a new fill layer just kind of um, thinking it up on the fly and on this one we'll go under mass smart mass here and it looks like the thumbnails actually popped up uh, in the century this time and we'll just slap that on here and now we have the chrome showing up with our mask if we alt click it we can look at just our mask and if we go to the mask editor there's some fun that's able to be had playing with the balance and the contrast and sometimes I like to have a uh, sharp transition we press in and we're back in material view and we can go ahead and add another layer and on this one we want to go back to materials and there's a classic that I always loved. I think it was paint gloss. Probably paint matte based off of how I feel today. And we'll just bring this down. And we can always uh, adjust the roughness after the fact if we want it to, uh, you know, suddenly get shiny. However, for this, I'm going to right click, add a black mask. And it's good to see that some things in Substance Painter uh, never change. Uh, like for example, I still press four, go to polygon fill, um, choose the fourth option. And whatever I click that UV Island will receive the material. You know, we could probably lower the opacity of the wireframes for this, but really I think we're making it, you know, just a quick texture job on this quickly UV object. You know, had no intentions to UV it. However, I realized that maybe I should at least show um, how I go through these things on, on quick tests. Of course, with the model that matters, you want to give it UVs that matter because assets matter. So here we are with our piece here. And there's just something about it. I, I don't know if I like it yet. Something like that. Maybe put the chrome on top of it and let's up our texture set resolution because right now it looks a little bad but if we look at it at 2048 suddenly it's looking a little bit better however the first material that we put just isn't going to work out for us so there's all sorts of metals to choose from when it comes to substance painter however I've also been collecting S bars over the years as well as buying packs of them so after some deep soul searching after the acquisition I realized you know I just got to stick with algorithmic um, love these guys too long so we'll change this to triplanar projection which now has a gizmo interesting A lot has uh, changed over here. Mirror transfer. All right, so this main material that I have here, I'm still not the biggest fan of, so we will find something a little bit finer. And that will do it for our texturing of this, however, Looking at this, I do see that there's some improvements that could have been made. Like for example, here. Uh, but let's deal with that. So I'll jump back to four mode. We'll just select these things. We'll just make sure we uh, give it an adequate hit. Let's get this thing too. And yeah, we probably should turn on the Z symmetry. But we're almost there. So we'll press M. And then look back at our handiwork. So from here, um, 
just for the sake of this, let's go ahead and export it. This is what it looks like at 2048. So we'll just go under File, hit Export Textures. And we'll just send this to where we need it. Copy that path. And we'll just export those maps real quick and then back to Blender. So back over in Blender, we have our object where we left it. I'm going to go ahead and just give this a new shader and we'll just jump this over to textured view. Let's jump back over to the modeling tab. I don't want to transform my UV area into a node area. It's not needed. So here we go. And of course, turn it to HQ so I have my viewport shadows using the Alt V menu. Right here, I have my maps. So let's go ahead and begin connecting now. In fact, I'll just put this off on the side. we we'll change metallic to non-color. And let's jump this over in the texture view so we can see it as we're working on it. Roughness, change to non-color. And then normal. Which we will also change to be non color. Shift A vector normal, and uh, not that one, vector normal map. And now we have our object textured and an EV. So to end it, we will bring in an area light. Notice that if I'm in Alt-V, uh, if I use the Alt-V menu and I jump over to EVHQ, it also turns on scene lights, which is why the spotlight is, I mean, the area light is working here. And if I press Q, I can turn on contact shadow, which will help it shading. When we take a look at this and we can see that we were able to get this non-destructive part exported, UV'd, and brought it back over to Blender for us to texture an EV. So if I use the settings toggle for wireframe, with this you're able to see what the wireframe is. So everywhere where there's triangles was formerly an end god. So this is the process that I needed to do in order to get this model out in the end. However, there are more efficient ways to do these things. However, I just wanted to show uh, the auto unwrap and hard ops in action as well as uh, take this part on a little adventure in Substance Painter. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next.